Good morning. Today's lesson is 7.9. We are multiplying mixed numbers. Our essential question, how do you multiply mixed numbers? Let's unlock the problem. One third of one and one fourth acre park has been reserved as a dog park. Find the number of acres that are used as a dog park. So in order to do that, we're going to multiply one third times one and one fourth. So in the area, the dog park has lesser, or, lesser than or greater than the area of one and one fourth acre park. And the answer to that is less than. So one way. One way we can use a model. We can shade the model to represent the whole park. So let's think. It says that the park is one and one fourth acre. So one and one fourth acre. Shade the model again. So let's do that. So we're going to shade one hole, right? This is one hole and one fourth. So that's going to represent the whole park. Then it says to shade the model again to represent the parts that is the dog park. Well, the dog part is one third, right? So if I break this up into thirds, let me use a different color. Let's break these up into thirds, right? And then I only need to shade one third of that. So this is one third of that right there, one third of that dog park. Okay, so again, the dog park is one third of the park, and I drew a horizontal line across to show the thirds. Right, I did that right there to show the thirds. How many parts does each rectangle show? Well, let's look at that. Okay, so let's look at the whole and count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So each hole has 12 parts now, right? So what fra fraction of each rectangle is shaded twice? So let's look at just the hole. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 of them that are shaded twice. So that's, that's 4 twelfths. And then on this one, we have 1 twelfth shaded. So what fraction represents all the parts which are shaded twice? 4 twelfths plus that 1 twelfth which equals 5 twelfths. So 5 twelfths of the acre has been set aside. If you do not want to do the model, another way is to rename the mixed numbers as a fraction. So you can write the mixed number as a fraction that's greater than 1. So for example, we have 1 third times 1 and 1 fourth. So I'm going to take this mixed number, 1 and 1 fourth, and I'm going to rewrite it. So it's going to be 4 times 1 plus the 1. We've done this before. So 4 times 1 is 4 plus the 1 is 5. So we're going to have 5 over 4. So now we have the problem 1 times 5 and 3 times 4. So it's just like we did on the other problems. 1 times 5 is 5, 3 times 4 is 12, so our answer is 5 twelfths, which is exactly what we got up here. So again, if I'm going to change this, first I multiply the bottom by the whole number, which is 4, and then I add the top number, which gave me the 5, and you keep the bottom number be the same. 4. Okay, let's look at example number one, renaming the whole number. So for multiplying 12 times 2 over one si 2 and 1 6, write the product in the simplest for form. So step one, determine how the product will compare to the greater factor. 12 times 2 and 1 6 will be less than or greater than 12. Well, if I'm multiplying by a whole number of 12, it's going to be greater than, right? It's going to be bigger because we're multiplying it. Step two. Write the whole number and mixed number as fractions. So first, the whole number as a fraction, 12. We're going to remember whenever we have that, we just simply put a 1 over it, right? So we're going to have 12 over 1. So this is essentially this. Now we have to rewrite this number. So remember when we're doing this, it's 2 times 6, which is 12, plus the 1, which is 13. So now we have 13 over 6. So our answer, <clears throat> so now we can solve it. Well, 12 times 13, 12 times 13 is 156 over 6. Now I know that 6, or I know that you can reduce it, right? 6 goes into 156 26 times, and 6 goes into 1 1 time. 
And look at that, it's a whole number, 26 over a one, which is 26. So 12 times two and one six is 26. Another way to think about this is using the distributive property, 16 times four and one eighths. So we have 16 times four and one eighth. So if I'm using the distributive property, I have 16 times, and if I break apart this four and one eighths, I'm gonna have the whole number four plus one eight. Okay, we've done this before. So now if I'm doing this, I'm gonna have 16 times, so it's one of those 16 times the four and then 16 times the one eight, right? So 16 times the four and then 16 times the one eight. So then you solve for 16 times four, which is 64, plus um, we have 16 for one eighths, which is 66. And so the answer is 66. Let's use reasoning, explain why you might choose the distributive property. So one reason is that, um, you know, it's easier to find 16 groups of 1 eighth than it is to just um, do it straight away. When you multiply two factors greater than 1, if, if is the product less than, between, or greater than the two factors? Well, the product is going to be greater than the two factors. And the reason is that, let me move this out of the way. The reason is that the product equals the greater factor times the number greater than one, which produces a number that's gonna be greater than both factors. Okay, Sharon Show, I just wanna do a couple of these with you. So let's, let's just do number two. So in order to multiply these, first I have to change them to the mixed numbers. So eight times one is eight, plus one is nine over eight times, now we have two times three, which is six, plus the one is seven over three. Now I just multiply them straight away. Seven times nine is 63. Eight times three is 24. So now I have to reduce it. 24 can go into 63 two times. Uh, and two times gives me 48, so I'm left with 15 over 24, which can be reduced because three goes into 15 um, five times, and three goes into 24 eight times. So my final answer is two and five eighths. Let's do one more. Let's do this one right here. So this side we don't have to do anything to, but this side we do need to finish. So five times three is 15, plus one is 16. So we have 16 over three times three fourths. Um, 16 times three. So if we do 16 times three, we get 18. Three, we get 48. So we get 48 over 12. 12 can go into 48 evenly, and it goes in four times. So my answer is four, which is a whole. Okay, finally, I'm gonna do just a couple of these problems. Let's see here, let's pick this one, number seven. So we can have two thirds, which I don't need to do anything to, but four and one fifth I do. Four times five is 20, plus one is 21 over five. So two times 21 is 42. Three times five is 15. 15 goes into 42 two times, which is 30, right? and I'll get 12 left over, over 15. I can reduce. Um, three goes into 12, uh, so I'm carrying over my two there. Three goes into 12 four times. Three goes into 12 four times, and three goes into 15 five times, so my answer to that one is two and four fifths. All right, I think you get the idea. Good luck. If you need me, I'm on the carpet, or you can work with a partner. Have a great day.